because today we prepared an, an awesome tour for you guys. It's one of the um, one of this live uh, sentiments tours. And we're going to talk mostly about street art, the street art scene in the city of Lisbon. And why am I so excited about this? Because first of all, we're going to walk around the Graça district and Graça district is quite dear to me. It was where I used to live when I moved to the city as a young man full of hopes and dreams. Um, and I'm going to talk about one of my favorite topics, street art. So let's start there. If you guys know anyone that loves the topic, that wants to know more about how's the scene here in Lisbon, don't forget to share this video. Send it to your friends, send it to your family, send it to your coworkers or your colleagues. Uh, spread the, um, the word. Not only that, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can key, you, you, you will can be updated for the next tours that will happen throughout, well, while the pandemic still, still, still is in place. Uh, and this is something that changed everything, guys. The pandemic uh, changed our lives, the tourism se sector specifically. And this is something, oh good, this is something that I miss a lot. I miss interacting with you guys. And that doesn't mean we cannot do this today. So throughout the tour, if you guys have any questions, and I mean any questions whatsoever, please write them down on the live chat. So because I will be looking into them and I'll be answering them later on. Now, before we do this, uh, I want to tell you guys a little bit about myself. Um, I'm Portuguese. I know sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Uh, I was born in the best part of Portugal. I never get tired of saying this, the Algarve, the beautiful and sunny Algarve. And I moved here when I was like 18 to study social psychology. I consider myself a social scientist. Um, I lived many years in Lisbon. I consider Lisbon my, one of my favorite cities of all times. Uh, lived a couple of years abroad, so lived in the Netherlands. Uh, came back, uh, moved to one of, um, one of my, my other favorite cities, which is Berlin, where I came across with Sandiments. Uh, I started working in operations with Sandiments, and after a while, I decided to actually come back to Lisbon. And again, today, guys, I will be showing you one of my favorite places in the city. Now, what do we have today? Today, we're mainly going to talk about street art. I'm going to mention a little bit about the graffiti scene, depending on how much time we're going to have today on the tour. We're not going to see any Bunksky, sorry about that. We're, gonna, we're not going to write our names on the wall, so sorry to disappoint you if you guys were thinking about this. But we will see some, some of the most incredible murals uh, of some mainly Portuguese artists. And I'll give you an introduction about that. Now, we're also going to see some architectural gems throughout the tour. And I will, see, I will show you guys one of my favorite view, uh, viewpoints of the city. Now, while we're waiting for people to tag along, and again, don't forget to like the video, you know, click on the heart, spread the word. I'm gonna see if you guys have any questions for me. So while we're live, I'm gonna open my Facebook feed. Let's see if I can. Here we go, and I'll see if you guys have any questions. Here we go. First question, is it illegal to do graffiti in Lisbon? Can you go to jail? This is one of the most common questions people ask me. Guys, uh, it's, it is illegal, so if you're caught in your act, you won't go to jail, you'll pay a fine, okay? Um, now, depending on the damage that will, uh, people will have that in account when it comes of the amount of fine, or the, the amount of money you're gonna pay for it, but relax, you won't go to jail because of that. Now, oh, I love this. Do you like living in Lisbon? I never get tired of Lisbon. I always like, whenever I go, I always come back to the city. Uh, so whenever I want to go away after a couple of while, I miss it, this Portuguese saudade. So I cannot stay that long ago, that, that far away from all the bifanish and all the sagres beers that we have here. Anything else? Oh, by the way, guys. Let me know if you were in Lisbon over the couple of years. Um, let me know if you guys did a tour with us, because I would love to know that. And above all, please let me know where you guys are seeing this video from, okay? Let's see if we have any more questions. Oh, I hate this. Are you a graffiti artist? Okay, especially because we're alive, I will never admit this live, but let's say I know a guy that knows a guy that knows a lot of graffiti artists. Uh, and a graffiti writer, so I, I kind of know my way around a spray can, a marker, uh, buckets of ink, so I'm quite familiar with the concept. Let's see if we have any more questions about this. 
Now, again, guys, it is a free tour. So um, like the free concept, this is quite important. Like the, the tourism industry uh, got, you know, went into a big problem with this big pandemic. So we do need your help now more than ever. Uh, like the free tour concept, this is free for everyone to tag along and to watch it. If you guys, by the end of the tour, enjoy this tour, please help us keep on recording these videos throughout uh, Europe and probably throughout the world. So donations, guys, are quite important. If you guys love me at the end, you know, you don't, don't forget to shower me with those low donations. Okay, it's gonna be super important for me, for the team behind the camera to actually uh, keep on like recording this video. Now, let me see if there's a couple more questions. Here you go. How long have you been a guide? Okay, hi Australia. Okay, this is the thing. I've been working as a guide almost for like five years now. Uh, you will see, I love talking about, uh, about, about history. I'm not an historian. And since I started tour guiding, I never, th I never thought I would do something else in my life. So it's one of my favorite things. And I just came across this by, actually by accident. So I love being a tour guide. I live in Lisbon for six months. Perfect. Uh, is it expensive city for living? It's becoming expensive. Okay, guys. Over the couple, of, uh, over the past years, Lisbon has suffered such an incredible boom in tourism that especially the rent prices have skyrocketed, uh, and the living cost in Lisbon is getting quite expensive. Especially if you think about, uh, you know, the, the average wage here in Portugal, which is still considered to be one of the lowest ones in Europe. Now, uh, here we go. I'm loving this, so keep on showering me with more questions. If you had to lend us a hand, okay, here we go. Oh, compare societies from Berlin to Lisbon. Oh, I love this, because again, Berlin is one of my favorite cities. In 2007, guys, the British Guardian said that Lisbon was becoming more hipster than Berlin. Now, I have some serious doubts about that, but it's, it's without any questions that over the couple of years, Lisbon has been transforming itself. And of course, as you will see today, the street art movement is, is booming in the city. And today, this city is one of the most um, favorite destinies for international artists to come here and showcase their, their, their art. Especially because who doesn't want to come to the sunny Lisbon, eat a bifana, drink a, a, a nice cold saga and showcase their work. And by the way, guys, if you were in Lisbon, let me know if you guys, what was your favorite f food here? Because again, I'm, uh, I, I love bifandas, I love cod. So it's something that I love in Lisbon, especially in the Graça district. Because Graça district, guys, you will see, is still one of the most traditional neighborhoods that you will see in the city. Now, since I'm loving this so much, I want to know more questions. Here we go. How is the tourism in Lisbon at the moment? Okay, this is a kind of tricky, like everywhere in Europe, guys, we're facing the, this complicated pandemic uh, and people in Lisbon are actually behaving accordingly. We're lowering the contamination rate, but this means that right now, basically all tourism activities are shut down. Uh, so that's why I'm a little bit excited today because I missed this a little bit um, and I really love to show you guys around and of course we're, today we're going to talk about two of my favorite topics which be street art and a little bit of the graffiti scene. Hopefully next year guys I will have you guys coming back to Lisbon and hopefully you'll have me showing you guys around. Now I think we have time for one more question. Let's see if we... Are any female graffitis that you're going to be showcased? Yes, there are. And by the end of the tour, guys, I will be showing you guys one of my favorite uh, female Portuguese artists. That it, she's a beast when it comes to her murals. Incredible work. So throughout the tour, guys, it's going to be my pleasure to introduce you to a bunch of Portuguese artists. If you guys don't know them, please go and research them. And of course, guys, if you know anyone, if you have a favorite one, don't forget to, you know, it's keep on communicating, write that name on our chat. Now, are we ready to start this? Here we go. So, first mural of today was part of a project from the Edamu Collective and 
uh, uh, have a lot of respect and admiration for these guys because they wanted to basically um, show throughout the Grassa neighborhood a bunch of like strong, very important female personalities that were somehow connected to the neighborhood. So the next, the first mural of today's tour belongs to a Portuguese artist by the name of Daniel Aim. And here you have it. Now, Daniel Aim was invited. He studied set design, um, and this guy is a master when it comes to stencils, okay? Because he uses them big with a lot of details. And here he showcases, guys, Sofia de Mel Breiner, one of the most incredible poets in our society, in our culture, that today rests among one of the finest, some of the finest Portuguese in the national pantheon. Now, as you can see, a lot of details, some, um, some abstract elements that he normally adds to his, to his composition, and little detail, look above. Can you guys see what that is? First of all, I love when people ask me, God, Gee, what the hell is that? Because uh, it looks like hieroglyphics. Well, that's a very characteristic writing style from the concrete jungles of Sao Paulo. Do you guys have any idea what is written there? It's pregos, and this is the famous pixel sound. Now, I want you guys to also look at the small monkey that is in the corner, okay? Because we will be seeing another monkey later on on the tour. Now, why do I want to mention pixel sound? Pixel sound, first of all, is a phenomenon that is booming right now in Lisbon. You're going to see a lot of this weird calligraphy uh, all over some rooftops in the city. In, in the city, and this is incredible because for me, when I was like uh, wandering around São Paulo, getting lost in the streets. By the way, not the perfect city to get lost in the streets. I got stoked at a certain point because I was wandering around uh, the streets and I stepped into a, a building. And when I started counting down, I was like, one, two, three, four, I got to the 13th floor with all of these writings on the wall. These guys for me are massive um, urban ninjas. Sometimes they use like, you know, climbing uh, gear to go up, but sometimes they do it bare hand. And it takes a lot of guts, especially because later on, I met a, a Brazilian artist that said, the higher you get, the more respect, and they actually love the challenge. So definitely a really cool original thing directly from Sao Paulo. Now, next mural shows you how international artists are coming to Lisbon to showcase their work. Then the next mural dominates the landscape. Here we have it, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Shepherd Ferry. Now, does that ring a bell, guys? Anyone? Again, don't forget to, to write it on, your, on, on the chat. Shepherd Ferry is most commonly known as Obey, Obey the Giant. This guy is one of the biggest names in street art. Probably you guys uh, remember a very famous poster from the Barack Obama presidential campaign in 2008 that had powerful words like his progress, change, and hope. Well, this was the man that did that. Did, did that. Uh, he also owns his own like uh, streetwear brand called Obey. And look at the mural, how cool it is. The girl with the revolutionary cap, the, the detail of the carnation on the barrel of their guns. Now, do you guys have any idea why is that important? Why the carnation and why the rifle is so important? Uh, for sure, the guys that did the tour with us in Lisbon know this. This is basically connected, this is like his, um, his testimony towards the Portuguese revolution in 1974. Uh, while we're ending the Portuguese dictatorship, a bunch of soldiers are storming the streets and one soldier bumps into a, a, a lady that had a bunch of carnations. He asks for a cigarette. Uh, the woman is like, I'm sorry, but I don't smoke. And she gives him a red carnation. And like that, the soldier placed the red carnation in the barrel of, their, of his gun. It's probably one of the greatest symbols that for the Portuguese is symbol of freedom. Now, we're arriving right now at the border between the neighboring district um, Sapadores and Graça. And here I want to show you another mural. Funny story. First time I came across this mural, I was together with two friends. And here we have it. And while I was trying to figure it out, while I was trying to figure it out, who was the artist behind this mural? I was looking for, for a tag, for a signature. Both of them start like talking to each other. And one says like, I kind of like, I, 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 the, the things that I see here are kind of familiar. And the other one goes like, you know what? It kind of looks ch childish a little bit. And that's the point. 
It was made by an artist called Isa Silva. It's called Era Uma Vez, Once Upon a Time, and it's painted right next to a school. You can see the cat of Alice in the Wonderland. You can see the little mermaid. You can see the, the wolf and the girl with the red hood. And she's, for me, a really cool example of how, you know, like right now Lisbon opened the doors to a lot of different artists with different background stories to actually, uh, with different backgrounds to actually showcase her, her work. And this girl, she studied uh, graphic design, but she didn't stop there. She does illustration, she published books, she does photography, and since 2014, guys, she started do, exposing her art on the streets. Now, this tour is going to be a little bit tricky because you will, we will talk about this. Lisbon literally has no space, so we're, we're going we're gonna to try to make this happen with these like narrow like, kind of like sidewalks. And one of the things I love to ask you guys when you guys come on my tour is this. How many hills do we have in Lisbon? And I love when you guys go something like, you know what, Guy? Seven hills. We have seven hills in Lisbon. And to everyone that always respond, responds to number seven, you're not actually wrong, but here we go, guys. Literally way more than seven hills. Now, this is good for you guys to, once again, work your legs, work your ass perfectly to exercise. And this street over here, guys, for me, is also a really good example of how uh, Lisbon itself is already an open air museum. Now, what if I tell you guys that way before street art was a thing, uh, Lisbon had a, its own unique and characteristic street art available for everyone to see. Now, any guesses? Again, don't forget to write them down on, on the comments below. Any guesses so far? Okay. I'm a sucker for this because I do love them. And Rita already spoke about this uh, in the previous tour tiles and the beautiful cobblestone sidewalks that we have. Literally guys, eyes on the floor everywhere you go in the city because there's art on the floors. There's some beautiful designs that are being made using cobblestones on the sidewalks. And of course, everywhere you go in the city, you have these incredible and beautiful uh, tiles. Talking about tiles, guys, I want to show you one of the beautiful patterns one of the most beautiful patterns I've found recently here in Grasse, which is this one. How cool is this? But, small detail. Can you guys see the sticker here? Gecko. Now, stickers are a tool used by many graffiti, art, graffiti writers and street artists to, to spread their name all over the place. And Gecko here is just a curiosity because for a while he was one of the most wanted men in a bunch of like European capitals. Lisbon was no different. Why? This guy was spreading his name all over the place with stickers, you know, tagging. Tagging is like when people write their name on the walls. Um, spreading his, writing his name in, in graffiti. And I was reading, uh, I was reading basically a, 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 the newspaper a couple of weeks ago. And I was surprised when I read a news that said like, famous gecko just got caught in Rome. So he's an Italian uh, artist, uh, he just got caught in Rome. The mayor was getting, was getting so mad at him because literally he, he had painted over a couple of like interesting monuments in Rome, old school monuments or Roman monuments. So I'm curious to see if, if, what's gonna happen to him even here in Lisbon because Lisbon had presented some cases against him. I, I, I'm curious to see if this is gonna happen, if it's gonna change something in, in the future. Now, what about 2020? Weird year, right? Now, everything stopped. People got back to their homes. People had to, um, to get back. Oh, sorry guys. Had to get back to their families. But just like this, the pandemic guys didn't stop our lives. We literally uh, kept, we had to keep on li uh, living. And this is what I wanna show you guys in our next mural. The next mural guys, it belongs to one of my favorite Portuguese artists. Um, because he took something that is quite common to us, it's already part of our DNA, and he twisted it around. Uh, he gave it like a huge, big, contemporary twist to one of our favorite things. And you're gonna know what it is as soon as I show you guys the mural. Now, the mural itself was the most recent mural that was made here in Grasse. It was made during the pandemic, um, and it just finished 
uh, a, couple, uh, a couple of weeks ago. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to present you a mural by Diogo Machado, AKA Add Fuel. Here we go. Look at the beauty of this incredible mural. First of all, look at the transition between the green that you have here on the right to the blue that you have on the corner left. First of all, guys, I love the geometric pattern that he uses. Again, I'm a sucker when it comes to tiles because you've guessed it, it reminds you of tiles. Um, not only look at the cracks he puts in the middle of his composition so to give up different layers. And by the way, he uses a lot of blue and white in his works because those are predominantly, guys, the colors used in the Portuguese tiles. And of course, a very cool detail that tells you guys about the harmony behind this mural is the tiles that you guys see here on the front part of the building. He did design the pattern that you guys see in the mural using as a reference the tiles that you already have in the building. How cool is that? And again, the, he named the, the, the mural Adapta. What does that, that mean in, uh, in Portuguese? adapt, which is basically what he wanted to, 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 to tell people with this mural. No matter how things change with the pandemic, we need to change with them. And it's together with our families, together with our communities, that we need to learn how to adapt to the current times. Now, what about other big players that you will find in Lisbon today when it comes to street art? The cool thing is, a lot of you guys ask me, why is Lisbon so trashed? Why is Lisbon so abandoned? And for you guys, I always love to tell you, you have no idea what you're talking about because like 20 years ago, this was way worse. Now, that's when it, everything changes. In 2008, uh, the, city, the city council decided, okay, enough is enough, we need to do something about it. And they started a major cleaning operation in some of the most historical neighborhoods of the city, namely Moreria, Alfama, and of course, the infamous Bairro Alto. Bairro Alto, from one day to the other, started cleaning over 20 years of graffiti. But they couldn't just like clean it without giving it an alternative, so they placed for the first time some panels at Rua da Glória that today showcase the first set of, uh, of an urban guard gallery, and just like this, Gao was born. Gao is the entity that over, oversees all these murals all over the city. And here, guys, we're going to have a collaboration between our dear Shepherd Ferry with one of my favorite artists of all times, Vils. Look again at the beauty of this mural. First of all, guys, very important for me because I used to live right around the corner, 100 meters from, from here, and look at the mural. First of all, it's a face of a woman. Uh, on the left side, you can see the, the part that was made by Hobe, Shepherd Ferry, uh, predominantly yellow, black, and red. Uh, and on the other side, Alexandre Farto Vils. Now, I cannot stress this enough, guys, but I love this guy. This guy uh, started doing graffiti on the streets. Graffiti opened the door for him to explore different ways of, uh, of expressing himself. And right now, you can see that the, the other half part of the wall made by Vils is carved on the wall. Yes, carved on the wall. This guy uses power tools like jackhammers, hammers to basically give shade and different like uh, different dimensions to the wall. Um, not only that, if you guys didn't know this guy before, please go and see his work. Because honestly, uh, the, for example, for people that like music, YouTube uh, fans, he produced a video um, called Wolves, if I'm not mistaken. And that video, guys, uh, shows him one of his cool techniques. He literally put dynamite on the walls and he blew up some walls. So some sort of like explosive street art. Definitely go into it. Careful with the cars. This is what I love about like uh, live tours, especially in Grasa. Now, here we go. Let me go this way. Here we go, guys. Now, let's go conquer one more hill because our next mural, guys, uh, is one of the early works of another favorite artist. This guy is called Burdal Segundo. And it's probably, this is one of his early commission works. And it shows you guys another iconic symbol of Lisbon. Now, look at this. 
Do you guys know what this is? Here we go. Any idea? For sure you did it. This is the ferry that crosses, connects both sides of the river. So north side to south side. And Burdao Sugun right now, guys, is one of the biggest Portuguese street artists at the moment. Why am I saying this? Because literally, in his words, some people's trash are some other people's treasures. And this is what he did. Uh, over the last couple of, um, of years, he's been working a lot in a series called The Animal Series, where he showcases faces of animals and you name it. Mark showed us like a, a picture of a bird made by him in Berlin, um, where what she basically uses garbage. So, so far, this guy has recycled an astonishing amount of over 60 tons of garbage uh, while doing this, uh, this, kind of art, this kind of art. And for sure, for those who've been here in Lisbon, you've seen a couple of his murals. So again, let me know which murals did you find all over the city. Let me know which one was your favorite, because definitely this guy is a name to be remembered. And for sure, he will keep on like spreading the word regarding all the consumerism, the excessive consumerism that is unfortunately a characteristic of our society today. Now, the next mural I'm gonna show you uh, is also part of the same project where, oh, uh, same project of, uh, of Daniel Aim that you guys saw for in, the, in the beginning. And that project, guys, was made by uh, a girl called Liu Nor Brilla. Now, why do I love the next mural I'm gonna show you? Because uh, she wanted to, to kind of like work the lives of Portuguese women during the First Republic and the Portuguese dictatorship. Uh, and let me tell you, it was not the best time to actually be a woman in Portugal. If you wanted to travel, you needed to ask permission to your father and afterwards to your husband. If you wanted to, to drive, if you want to take your driver's license, you would still need to ask permission. Um, so, lives of women were not easy uh, for the most part of like the 20th century. And this is why this mural here uh, slapped me in the face. Look at the details that you're going to see here over on this wall. Again, Leonor Brilha is the artist. Uh, literally, if you guys walk inside any house in Portugal, 90% chance you're going to find towels and some sort of, uh, uh, of sheets that have these patterns drawn in it. Like uh, people back in the days used to spend a lot of time knitting. It was part of like, it was like a social skill that they needed to master. Now, look at the sentence below. A casa não passava de uma gaiola e ao bordar a mulher, uh, ser again, sorry, a mulher portuguesa tecia as teias do silêncio. Now, I don't know how's your Portuguese at the moment, by the way, but this goes something like this. Uh, behind closed doors, when the Portuguese women was embroidering, so knitting, she basically uh, did the webs of her own silence. It's a beautiful analogy when it comes to, uh, most of the Portuguese women at the time spent a lot of the time knitting. And it was a way to escape from the suppression from their husband and their, and, the, and, their, um, and their fathers, but at the same time was also a prison in itself. Now, like I told you at the beginning of the tour, I'm also gonna show you guys some precious architectural gems that you will find hidden inside Grasse. And here it is, guys. We're about to enter a totally different world. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Vila Berta. Now, why Vila Berta is so important? Now, let's go back 100 years ago, and Lisbon was experiencing a brief moment of economic growth uh, in the 19th century due to industrialization and beginning of the, the 20th century. Uh, why is this a problem? I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's not, there, there's not that much space in Lisbon. Uh, everything is super tiny here. We're not big. I'm average. You know, our Portuguese women are super small. Uh, and this was a huge, big problem. When all the workers started, you know, arriving to the city, there were no houses available. So this quarter that you guys are seeing here was actually a, vis a vision 
by a Brazilian entrepreneur called Joaquim Tujal that the, in the beginning of the 20th century built this quarter. It's like a small village inside the big neighborhood of, um, of Graça. And why is it cool? Because, first of all, tiles. Who doesn't love the tiles? This decorative tiles that you're going to see everywhere. Second, you guys are looking at, look at the iron balconies that you guys see on your right side. Now, why is this important? Because, well, to be honest, if you guys look to the other side of the building, there's no balconies. You know what that means? Simple. On one side, you would have the working class, and on the other side, you have the upper class, the middle class. So both of them would, would basically share the same space. And guys, this is one of the most beautiful streets in Lisbon. So for all of your Instagram influencers, this is definitely a place to come and take a couple of pictures. Now, let me know if you guys were here before when you came here and visit Lisbon. Please do leave your comment. Now, one of the things that I love about this place is os santos populares. Now, you guys know that in June, it's probably the most exciting period to come to Lisbon because we, have, we celebrate St. Anthony, which is basically as marchas populares. It's a little bit the song that you guys see here. I, I normally say it's like this lame Portuguese carnival, but it, for an entire month, people get together and they start like, uh, they, they eat sardines, they drink. And this was one of, used to be one of my favorite places while I was like wandering around the, 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 the neighborhood of Graça. So, so I would definitely come here, interact with the people, drink a couple of beers and eat sardines. Now, the cool thing about this, but this was totally abandoned for years. Um, and in 2015, However, the, the local population wanted to bring back the former glory of Villa Berta, and today it actually suffered a requalification program. To be honest, one of the problems here with this, uh, with this neighborhood was that a lot of the residents complained about the amount of graffiti that the kids used to come here and, and, and do. It's a dead alley. So People used to come here and do their taggings, do their, their stuff. The thing is, they didn't realize the, the architectural importance of Villa Berta at the moment. One, let me also take advantage to, right now, explain why we conquer another hill, uh, a little bit about the graffiti scene in Lisbon. Now, it started in the 70s and the 80s, especially with political, uh, with political motives behind. I still remember seeing one or two um, when I arrived to Lisbon. In the 90s, when it was already well established in other European cities, uh, it arrived to Portugal. You know, we, we like to take our time. By 2001, when I arrived to the city, it was booming. So tagging everywhere, which are the signatures, which some people consider visual garbage, but it is graffiti, no matter how you say that. Uh, and in the other hand, it's almost like calligraphy. And if you guys want me to tell you guys a little bit more about graffiti in Lisbon, whoo, graffiti in Lisbon, illegal graffiti in Lisbon, please do let me know and we can prepare another tour for you guys. So in the early 2000s, it was booming of graffiti. And to, to some extent that you know, it's key. it kept on like um, people, graffiti kept on like booming everywhere you would go. And like I said in the beginning, there was a point where the city council were so tired, they said, you know, enough is enough, we need to do something about it. Today, guys, there's a zero policy level towards illegal graffiti, which is a little bit weird because to be honest, Gal, Galeria da Arte Urbana, promoted safe spots for local and international artists to, to show off their, their work. But again, you know, it, it, for me, it takes a little bit the freedom of having a spray can or a marker in your hands and you do whatever you want. So today, guys, zero policy level towards illegal graffiti. That's why you see today kind of a clean city. You don't find that many tags everywhere. They don't, they don't last that long. Now, can you guys see also we're arriving at the at Largo de Graça. This is where I used to take the, the, the famous 28 to get to Bairro Alto before one o'clock in the morning. And here to your right, guys, you have like this kind of weird building. It looks, looks like kind of a fortress, right? 
Well, a small bird told me that, first of all, this is part of the, of the Graz Monastery that has been requalified over the, over the couple, uh, over the couple of months, over the couple of last year. Uh, and a small bird told me that this, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be sold or part of it is going to be sold to guess what? Any ideas what they're going to build here? You said it. Another five star hotel. I don't know if it's true or not, but if it is, guys, Wisman will have the biggest proportion of five star hotels per square meter. And this comes with huge, big problems. So again, today we're only gonna focus on street art. Um, so if you guys wanna know more about gentrification, if you wanna know more about how currently Wisman is changing, please let me know so I can talk about this later on in the future, on the future tour. Now, next building. Look how massive it is. This beautiful blue tiled building. This is another one of those industrial village. Now, funny story, uh, it was an old palace from Kunduz, a count, count of Valdegrijs. As you know, 1755, what happened? Huge big earthquake, so everything went, went, got destroyed. They rebuilt it, suffered a huge big fire. <laughs> so this guy, João Luis de Souza, later on, bought the ruins and built this industrial village. Look how beautiful it is. It's an entire block. Now, you go into people's houses through the iron gates because yeah, officially there's people still living inside the patio. And of course, this is not important because we have in this building, guys, a very important bar. It's called U Butiquim. U Butiquim de Liberdade. Now, you guys are asking, why the hell is this guy talking about a bar in the middle of a street art tour? Simple. This, this bar was opened by another great female personality, Natalia Correa, escritora, uh, writer, poet. Uh, she was even a, a politician. And in 68, she opened the bar. And this bar was one, one of those places where all the intellectuals, and I mean artists, I mean politicians, I mean musicians, would gather in a safe place to actually talk about something else. Why is this relevant, guys? We're talking about 1968. 1960s, we're in the middle of the Portuguese dictatorship. Salazar is in charge. So if you literally, you don't talk about politics. So this was a place where feminism was, was talked about, where people would, um, would express their, 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 their minds without having no fears of repercussion. Now, I'm arriving to one of my favorite spots in, this, in, in town. This is where I, I spent countless afternoons drinking beer, playing chess, enjoying countless sunsets. Uh, I love to bring you guys here because we normally have to conquer the hill. Halfway through the hill, you guys are like, oh, Guy, this is impossible. How do you guys do this? Yes, people say that you get used to the hills. You never get used to the hills in Lisbon. But again, it's a good, exer it's a good exercise. And here, guys, you will have one of the most fantastic views over the city. If you guys were here before, let me know what you guys thought about this because I don't want you guys to, say, to talk trash about this. This is by far one of my favorite places. So in three, two, one, are you guys ready? Enjoy the view. Now, I know it's far away, but if you guys spotted on the right side, another set of trees right next to it, you have like this blue mural. Again, another favorite Portuguese artist, AKA Corleone. And that showcases Fernando Pessoa, uh, one of the most eccentric, one of the most exciting writers of all times, in one of his psychedelic dreams. For me, it's a good example of how transformative street art can actually be. Um, and of course, I, my, my, our next stop is going to be another cool example about this. We're going to go down an alley, and that alley was also uh, constantly being tagged, vandalized in, in a way. And of course, uh, street art actually started like changing the geography of the places because to be honest, all over the city, Gauss started promoting a bunch of initiatives where, for example, last time I was in the Quinta do Moche in San Cavai, I had people coming to me and saying like, come and look at my building, look, come and look at my painting. It's the best painting in the neighborhood. People feel proud about that. Now, you will enter the famous Caracol de Graça. Now, here I need to shout out to another collective 
the yes you can spray collective now these guys are big these guys have been doing like street art tours for a while now they know their business they interact with, with the artist and here it's a beautiful example of how basically they started appropriating from the public space uh, and exactly inviting other artists to come here and leave their mark these two murals, for example, that you guys are seeing here today, one of them is from a Russian-born uh, artist that was raised in Syria and right now is, is in Dubai. This one is considered to be um, one, of the one of the biggest contemporary like, uh, urban artists in, um, in, uh, in, uh, in London. And here, guys, you have one of my favorite female characters yeah, not that female character, okay guys? Nothing, nothing compared to that. I wanna showcase another one. And do you guys remember one of the first questions in the beginning? Strong female uh, Portuguese street artist? Here you go, Tamara Alves. Tamara Alves, this is a, a collaboration between, I would say two friends, Tamara Alves, José Carvalho, José Arv. Uh, she has incredible, powerful and beautiful work sometimes showcasing the female personality. He uses a lot, she uses a lot of also nature elements and sometimes she fuses them together, she combines them together. And of course, Jose Arv, um, you know, uses this bunch of lines all together. Uh, they kind of seem chaotic, but in the end, you do have a composition. You have birds, you have trees, you have plants. And remember the, the how do you call it, the, the, um, the monkey I showed you guys at the beginning? Here you have it full-size monkey and again I love this monkey because I bumped into this monkey several times when I was like getting lost in, a, in Sao Paulo because this guy this guy is made by a Brazilian artist called Suptu. Now while I let you guys enjoy the rest of the murals that you guys see here I will take advantage to again go back to the chat and see if you guys have any more questions for me now, here we go, guys. Let's see, which is your spot of the city? Oh, interesting. Again, this was, we just passed by one of my all-time favorite spots, which was the Graça viewpoint. Uh, incredible place to bring your friends, bring your girlfriend, and love the sunset. Just enjoy the sunset. Now, do you think the graffiti scene in Lisbon is growing? It was regressing with the legal constraints. Oh, I love this question. Okay, first of all, guys, the graffiti scene is still pretty much alive, okay? There are some active writers in Lisbon, but again, the, um, the, the zero tolerance level towards what is considered to be graffiti, uh, illegal graffiti, is changing a little bit the balance of power. Uh, on one hand, you know, I, I always say that graffiti doesn't last forever. Uh, but on the other hand, it probably is going to get way more motivation to the local artists to keep on spreading uh, their name. Because that's literally what graffiti I I is about, you know, like spread your name all over the place as much as you can. Uh, on another subject, guys, again, if you really want to know more about this illegal graffiti scene in, uh, in Lisbon, which is by far my favorite topic, let me know so I can research it and we can prepare another cool tour for you guys. Now, I will see if you guys have one more question for me. Let's see. I think we're good. Now, guys. Once again, unfortunately, we're almost at the end of the tour. Uh, I would love to keep on going. And for me, well, I think you've noticed, I love to talk, so I would keep on going this for hours. Um, I will let you guys stay with this incredible view of Lisbon. Now, before we do this, uh, I won't forget, I, I, I cannot stress this enough. We do need your support. If we grew so, if we grew this so far, guys, it's, it was just because of you guys. So, if you guys want to have way more uh, more tours like this, donations are quite important. And donate as much as you as you want, as much as you can. Okay. If you did love the tour, you know, shower me with those bills. If not, keep on supporting us because this is a way me, my fellow colleagues, and the the, the people behind the camera can keep on organizing these tours. Again. I hope you guys enjoy this small piece. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to spread the word. After this, send the video to all of your friends so we keep on like having more people to join our community. 
Uh, and again, guys, it was a big pleasure for me. Guy signing out from Lisbon, and I hope to see you guys soon.